Good morning, everyone. And thank you so much, uh, Mr. Lackey. Sure. It's really good to be here and commend the initiative of Sport PT and all the collaborators in putting this together. There is so much to be done, especially at a time like this. And I'm so happy to be part of this team that will take you through. As indicated, we are going to talk a bit about leading in a crisis. You know what happens? We're in a time of crisis. We all know that. It's no news that we are in a time where people are throwing their hands up in the air. There's such uncertainty. There's fear. People just don't know. Even leaders are not sure as to what step to take. We are going to look this morning at how you are leading in your organization. We are going to look at some of the principles that you use. We are going to look at whether or not you are stuck, you are unstuck. Now, my style is highly interactive. You don't get to fall asleep on me. You don't get to be doing all the work. I'm not going to be talking down at you, but we are going to plow this thing through together. So let me begin to share a bit about who I am and why I get to come in front of your screen this morning. A little bit of Gail. Gail is no new kid on the block. I've been around and please don't judge my age. I have been in this field for the last 30 years. As a transformation coach, focusing on the workplace, working with leaders, working with employees. I'm the founder and executive director of Business Support Center of the Caribbean. And what we do basically, we partner with executives just to help them tweak things a bit and build exceptional employees as well as leaders. The workplace is my domain. I understand the politics of the workplace. I understand the protocol of the workplace. I understand what is required for value and productivity to be high, extremely high in the workplace. So at this stage, there's nothing new under the sun as I would like to see. I've got all the nuts and bolts in place in terms of being the graduate. And I sit on both sides of the fence in terms of being board member of different organizations within the Caribbean. So I have been around a bit. It's nothing new, but we're always learning. And so this morning, let's just talk a bit about what we are going to cover. We are in the process of getting started now. We are going to look at a mindset shift because a leader is different to a crisis leader. A leader is different from a crisis leader. A crisis leader gets into a particular more. It's different. It's not business as usual. So we are going to get into a bit of that. Then we are going to look at how we get in position for the battle. And I'm saying battle here because you will understand that being in a crisis mode sends us into battle. It's not business as usual. Then we are going to look at how we secure ourselves. Because even though we leave, we have to secure ourselves. We're not good to anybody unless we secure ourselves first. And then we get down to the bottom line. How do we actually walk this talk? And that last slide, I'd like to talk about time and maintain. Simply because You've got to build, 
and fight at the same time. In some cases, the crisis does not really go away. Has COVID-19 gone away? No, it hasn't. It is right here. And things continue to develop out of it. But does it stop us from climbing? No, it doesn't. We have to climb and maintain. So before we get into the talk, I want to do two things for me. For us to get the best out of this morning, we have got to focus. We have got to take off every other device. We have got to put that phone on silent, muted, whatever it is you want to do. We have got to everything else you have happening in the back end of the system. Let's repeat. Let's repeat. Let's just stay focused as we go through this. Because at the end of the time that we will spend, you will have live examples as to how you are going back, how you are going to proceed in your organization and the way forward. So don't miss it. I'm going to pause here for a quick question, comments, feedback, anything. We know the drill by now. You want to make a contribution, you want to say something, you raise your hand. You just click on that and we will see you and address it. So let's go. Let's look at what John Maxwell has to say about leadership. Leadership is what? Leadership is not about titles. It is not about position or flowcharts. It is not about how well you dress and how trendy you are and how much you can you, you, you can flex and you can you can talk to people and perhaps order them around. Leadership is not that. It's not any of those things. But really, leadership is about one life. Leadership is about your life as the leader, influencing the lives of others. If at the end of your period with an organization, you have not influenced change you have not impacted in any way then go back to the drawing board before you connect with another organization leadership is impacting and we have got to influence influence what influence change positive change so we're talking mindset here we're looking we are looking at our mindset we're looking at our thought process what is it? How do we think? How do we see ourselves as leaders? My name is the person. Managers and leaders are two different people. No? Managers and leaders are two different yes. people. Managers pass information along. They may have gotten it from somewhere and they're just carrying out an instruction. Leaders create, create the information. And so that information comes from within. It's not only based on knowledge. Managers move in a more clinical way towards the employee or towards the team. Because remember, managers simply 
pass along. Managers make sure that the nuts and bolts are in place. This is what we are to do, and this is what we're going to do. You do that, you do that, you do the other. The leader is the one who forms a team, who encourages, who motivates, who empathizes, who encourages growth and development among the team. That leader is the person who sets benchmarks and follows through. That person who is the leader take an invested interest in what you are doing. That leader is a problem solver. And that leader continues to build a knowledge base so that he or she is not redundant. Now the manager specializes and that's good. The manager chooses, the manager reports, the manager is reactive, the manager is the one who implements and maintain. But you would agree that there is a stark difference between the two. One goes deeper. One gets into the heart and the mind of people. Now you say, but Bagil, what's the point? Let me let me just come to the work and go no deal. But if you are about something else and your value system lines up in another way, you can't take up that approach. You won't take that approach. I'm going to pause there for a minute for any questions, anything anybody may want to ask or views that you may want to share. No questions? No question? No feedback? Nobody wants to disagree? No one wants to agree, even with a thumbs up? Okay, let's go. So we're warming up. Let's look at leadership character. When there's a crisis, when there is a crisis, what do we notice? What do we see? True leaders come forward. The true leader, now mind you, you may not be a leader in terms of the title, because remember we say, we, we said this is not about titles. You may not, at the time of the crisis, you may not be carried the heart of a leader, but the leader within you comes out and that separates you and sometimes it does. And you could please correct me if I'm wrong. But sometimes the true leadership in someone comes out and shows up the other person who is actually wearing the hat. Come on, let me, somebody give me some feedback. I'm saying that you don't need to have a title to lead. I'm saying that in the time of crisis, the true leader is revealed. And sometimes it could be the person who is not wearing the hat. In a time of crisis, leaders are more visible. This is not a time to hide. Leaders assess the situations and they find solutions. That's the goal, to assess what the problem is and to find a solution. 
more important leaders in a crisis, they rise to the challenge. You know, some people could disappear when something happens. Some people could disappear. You're looking for Mr. X or Miss Y. But she, wait a minute, she, she left? She was just here. And Ronaldo is saying, keep going. We're going, Ronaldo. Thank you so much. At least I know that there's somebody else in the room with me and I'm not alone. Hi, yes. You rise to the challenge. Mm -hmm. What I like about this next point, though, there's humility. A leader demonstrates humility in a time of crisis and otherwise. It's nothing about flexing. It's not about flexing. It's about humility and courage. Let's look at, based on this, let us look. Let's take a moment now to evaluate. Let's look at us. Where are you? Where are you? Where do you see yourself as the leader? Where are you at this particular moment? Now, don't mind this guy here. That's that's my guy. This is not this is not any of you. This is my guy. Just thinking. Will you describe yourself as a leader based on what we've shared before? Would you? And this is the point where you talk to me, really talk to me. Yes, Gail, I see myself. No, Gail, I, I, girl, I have some stuff that I, I need to work out based on what we're talking about this morning. What are you saying? Or do you think you have it all together, lovely, and, and you're cool? If that's the case, bless you. But some of us still have a lot of stuff to work out. Can you describe yourself as that leader? There's somebody out there who can share you with me. I know that this is not your first session. You've had other sessions for the last Thursdays, few Thursdays. So you've got that custom now. I'm seeing Lisa. I'm seeing Don. Roxanne. Lemuel. Leroy. I'm calling names so that you can be encouraged to give me some feedback. Douglas, Dexter, what are your thoughts? Corrine, what, what are your thoughts? Will you describe yourself as a leader? Will you do that in this time of crisis that we're going through? And we're all going through. There isn't anybody who can say that they're not. There's no organization who is not experiencing some kind of challenge or discomfort. There isn't. Will you describe yourself as a leader? You know, last month, I worked with a group of leaders, leaders at senior level, responsible for hundreds of employees. And the topic 
was just what we're talking about here, how to lead in this time of crisis. And they were particularly concerned about mental health. Many persons are being affected. The people that we are leading or we are called to lead are being affected. We are being affected as leaders. How are we leading? So we need to get in position, guys. This is something, this is a time where we have to be intentional. Okay, so you're an introvert, then you have to push your way through. You've got to push your way out because you can't be sitting at your desk, hiding behind your desk. And in some cases, we are so glad for the mask. People can't see. But if you're like me, you know how to read the eyes and the body language. This is not a time for us to be in that mode, but we have to be intentional. Because we have to do it. We're required to do it. We are responsible for so many people. So how do you get in position? I want you to identify some of your challenges. If any of these relate to you, they may not relate to you. They may relate to me, I don't know. They may relate to somebody else in, an, in another entry. But what are your challenges? And I do, you know, I really hope that you have your notepad and your paper there your pen or pencil, whatever it is, or your recording device. We're not waiting until you get a copy of the video, but we want to deal with some things now. What are your challenges as a leader? Are you an introvert? And we know that introverts, they don't like the phone, they don't like to go to the front. They just kind of leave me alone in my space? Or is it that you are someone, you have difficulty communicating with others. You know exactly what you want to say. It's all up here. But it can't stay here. It has to come out so that others can make decisions, they can respond to you. Is that your challenge, that you're having difficulty communicating with others? What is your eye? What is your eye? We all have them. Don't feel for a minute that I stand before you with all the nuts and bolts in place. Not at all. Not at all. But it's an ongoing, ongoing job. It's an ongoing work. We are intentional. We know that we have as leaders that we are called to influence and impact people and we're working towards. Identify your challenge. Who's brave enough to indicate one, highlight one challenge to us? Who's brave enough? Do I hear crickets? <laughs> huh? Come on, no, yeah, yeah, leader, arise. It might be uncomfortable, and that's okay. Anybody Hello. wants to share with us? Yeah. Hmm? Colin Peters, Robbie here. A gentle reminder that we're raising our hands. And you use the hand up signal. Hello.
Hello. Go ahead, Miss Antoine. We're hearing you. Oh, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, personally, in terms of challenges for myself at communicating, it would be that I generally prefer going through a written channel as opposed to a verbal channel. Just just because um, that way it's easier for me to properly visualize the message I'm trying to convey, even if it's an informal message. And it would be easier for me to refer back to it if it is uh, brought up or uh, misconstrued in some way. So it's easier for uh, me to... Mr. Antoine, we, we missed... Sorry about that. We missed the, the start of your question. Do you mind just restarting for us, please? Sorry sure, about that. Sure, no problem. Uh, it was just that personally for me it's easier to have a written form as opposed to a verbal form of communication. Generally, that's because it's easier for me to either refer back to it if there's a error or a misunderstanding. And it's also better for me to see it visually so that I, I'm sure I have a better understanding of what I'm trying to get out. So even if it's an informal message or something that could just be uh, said in a room or said in passing conversation, sometimes it's just easier for me to have it written or visual in some way so that it's just it's just easier for me to digest for myself as opposed to saying it out loud like that. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand. I understand exactly what you mean. And I, I like that point that you made. It is easier for you, it's in your comfort zone, to write that thing down, the written communication, as opposed to me having a conversation. But you realize at some time, and, and they have to go hand in hand, sometimes, it requires us to speak because the message may not be as clear and it may not take the, the, the kind of, um, it may not give the same effect as opposed to when you write it. So there's a time for us to write and there's a time for us to speak. And sometimes we have to incorporate both. What I believe is that this is where you feel most comfortable. But if you are to, if you are to lead, especially we're talking here about crisis. You know, when we have a crisis in our homes, we get different. We operate in a different way. Our mind just goes in a different direction when there is a crisis. And so you do not want to go to the hospital. You don't like going to the hospital, but guess what? There's a crisis and you find yourself jumping in that heat and getting yourself. There's a crisis and normally you're not a loud person, but you find yourself rising to the occasion because there's a crisis. And so I would encourage you to embody both. Practice. Practice a little at a time. When you think of writing that correspondence or that memo, pick up the phone or call in the person and have a chat. Little at a time. It's not an overnight thing because we have been cemented in some areas. But our approach has to be different. Our mindset has to change when we are talking crisis. But thank you so much for that point. Good point. Come on, anybody else? Can we move on? Somebody else has a point to make, a question to ask.
Okay. Let's go to the next one. So we identify the challenges. We have seen where we are. Even though you didn't share where you are, you know where you are. You know the challenges that you have. Some people may notice some of them or all of them, but there you know, you know. And so I want you, even though you don't share it with us, I want you to record it. I want you to write down. I want you to be intentional and document what you know your challenges are, because as leaders, we all have them. And let me get back to the slides now. Can you take me back? Leading in a time of crisis is vastly different from day to day leading. Leroy, can being a proactive leader assist in managing crisis effectively? Leroy, I like you. You want to take it in front before it takes you. And that is good. Because a good leader, an effective leader, is proactive. But there are going to be times, Leroy, when there, a crisis comes up that we did not prepare for. And we, we all know what we're talking about. Did anyone of us prepare for the sign? Hmm? None of us prepared. None of us knew that this was coming. Nobody knew that we were going to be in a pandemic. Nobody knew that we were going to be on lockdown. Nobody knew. Better? Yeah. Good. So nobody knew that we were going to be in the position that we got ourselves in, we found ourselves in. But certainly, you can be proactive as much as you can. But we have to rise to the occasion when crisis happens that we were not prepared for. And that's what we're dealing with now. Good question, Leroy. So we have identified our challenges. I'm going to ask you not to keep them close to your chest. Let's look at you now. Let's look at you. So you have a team and you're in crisis and you're still required to lead the team. But what about you? Yes, it can, Leroy. Team management can help in situations as this. Yes, it can. And that's a and 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 that is something that should be ongoing. I'm just answering a question here from Leroy here. So we're looking at ourselves now. We have to manage a team, especially in a time of crisis. Everything is going on. And you realize we have no control over this thing. We can't push a button and it stops. It's one of those things we have no control over. How frustrating. As I said to that group last month, self-care must now be on your list of priorities. Self-care. 
Now I realize that we're talking about a sector that is predominantly male. Predominantly male. The sporting sector. People who are the head of the administration. And men don't like to have this kind of conversation. Forgive me if I'm wrong, gentlemen. But men do not like to have this kind of conversation. Because what? They're good. Nothing is wrong. As long as I go to the gym and I build up and hair looks good and so on and so on, I'm good. Self-care. You didn't expect this. I'm talking mostly to the gentlemen here. Ladies, I'm coming to you just now. You didn't expect this. None of us did. But it is and it will continue to take a toll on all of us if we do not manage, if we do not implement self-care. Do you know that in organizations with um, mental health facilities for employees. You know that has spiked? EAP programs, employee assistance programs, more and more employees are using it. E EAPs are making a lot more money than before. Why? People have this thing. whether you have to balance home and work. You have children who are online at school. It's no longer you ship, you ship them off to school and you have the whole day and they come back in the afternoon and you, you, you leave Mr. Handel that story. But you now have to play a greater part. Teachers are more demanding. Self-care. Are you doing your checkup? You didn't know before that you were hypertensive, did you? But this sent your pressure up, didn't it? Self-care. I'm saying that as a leader, you have to manage in a time of crisis, then you have got to take care of yourself before you can take care of any other person, not your family, not your team at work, nobody. Get you together first. And we learn that. They say you put your mask on before you go to help somebody else. It's the same principle. Self-care must be on your list. As you have your grocery list, self-care must factor on that list as a priority. I cannot emphasize that enough in every, every group every environment that I find myself in, facilitating a program, whether it be at the, the level of the leader or just the employee, whatever level it is, self-care is critical for us. Too many people are crashing. And I'm not saying that lightly. What are you doing to take care of you? What have you been doing when was your last checkup? When last did you find time to walk away and love you up? When was the last time? 
Ladies, when was the last time you were well pampered, well taken care of? Are you pinching the pennies? When was the last time? When was the last time you just sat down and had a heart to heart conversation with somebody you trust? Just getting it off, whatever it is, getting everything out of your system. When was the last time? You might be asking, what does that have to do with what we're talking about this morning? It has everything to do with it. Everything. Because if you project yourself in a particular way, now make no mistake, when we do not take care of ourselves, it shows. Ladies, you can use as much makeup as you want, layers of them. It shows. It shows. Gentlemen, it shows. I'm not going to say where. It shows. And so if you have this thing happening inside and you're not doing anything about it, the way you deal with your employees, the way you manage this time of crisis will be affected. And you will see as we go down. Self-care. Let's get to the bottom line of this. Let's bring all of this together. We're talking here about leading in crisis, maintaining resilience. And I love the word resilience always. Why? Because resilience tells me, here's what, you're able to master something. You're able to go through something. Get over it without scars without scars, that's resilient. Some of us think we bounce back. Some of us think that we are, it's happening because we, we're reporting for, for work, we're coming to work, we're doing the things, we're going through the motion, but are we really resilient as leaders? Are we carrying some scars? Things have affected us over the last few months. Seriously, are we where we start? So let's get to the bottom line. Let's wrap this thing up this morning. To lead in crisis, you've got to meet the situation head on. Don't run. Don't run. Meet it head on. Then you be transparent. You be truthful. You be honest. Don't lie to the people. It catches up with you. Many of us, many of us know that things have happened in the past. And we're not calling any names. We're not going down a particular road, please. But we do know that things were done in the past where there was no transparency and it is catching up now. Mm? Locally, regionally, internationally. And we know this, we know the scenarios. Be transparent with your team. When people are brought into, when they are allowed to be part of something, you get the better out of them. You get a whole lot more. When you get people to understand, listen guys, this is the story. This is what we have happening. And you know, unfortunately, we cannot pay. We cannot meet this commitment. What do you all think we can do? Let's look at it together as a team. When people are involved that way, you get more out of them. So be transparent. Even with 
people at the lower levels. Meet them at their point. Don't lie. Be honest with your team. Let them know what is happening. Of course, you know who to tell what. Not everybody understands confidentiality. Leroy has a question. I see your hand up. Yes, um, I'm hearing you clearly in terms of um, the team approach. Hold, hold on. on, hold on, Leroy. One, one second. All right, go ahead. Yeah, um, I'm hearing you clearly in terms of the team approach. However, one of the concerns I have is that the team approach is used or at the point when there's a challenge, when there's a crisis. And by that time, it's too late to put mitigating factors in place. My idea of a team approach is that it should happen during the process, even long before crisis happens. So that in the event a crisis takes place, you would find that the members of the team are able to assist in decision making. But we sometimes get too late when the crisis happens, then to involve the team. But there's little that could be suggested or done because you would have either misspend, mismanage, or whatever, and it's too late. So I prefer a team approach long before the process of a crisis. Thank you, Leroy. You may or may not have noticed that I was applauding you when you were speaking from the beginning, from the get go. Get your people involved. That's an important approach. Excellent view. So that when and if there is a time of crisis, the buy-in is easier. In fact, you don't have to say anything. They may come and say, so, so how are we handling this? Excellent point, Leroy. So we remain transparent. We increase our lines of communication. And this is where the challenge comes in for many leaders. They don't want to talk. They don't want to communicate. Chances are they don't understand the situation themselves. And they don't want to go through that whole barrage of questions where they, they don't have the answers. Chances are they are not clear on what to do or how to move. But this is the time for the leader, for you to gather all the facts. See the bigger picture. Stay focused and communicate with your team. Be visible throughout. We talked about hiding. Be visible. Be visible when you speak to them. Some people communicate and they are not visible. You know somebody said something in the room, but they were not visible to you. It didn't impact you. That's another story all by itself. Being visible when you communicate. It's all about your presence. As a leader, you need to have presence. Work on helping team members to stay confident. Now, this is the people part. This is the people part. This is what separates you. One of the ways you are separated from the person who is just the manager. You have got to keep your team 
keep them positive. Help them to, to, to maintain. It's okay to be afraid. If that's okay, you know. It's how we deal with that fear. How we use that fear so that it can be converted into a strength. How? So not only do you have to find as a leader the solution, you also have to maintain the well-being of your team. It's not easy. Are you seeing now where self-care is more important and necessary than ever? It is. Because you have got to motivate and show them empathy. Listen, guys, we are all in this together. This is what they need to see from you and not you up there and they down here and there's a struggle. What? That team spirit has to be there. An important bottom line when you are leading in crisis is to implement initiatives that would address mental health and even social challenges that your staff, the people that you lead would have. You've got to do this. I'm not suggesting that you go and implement um, very costly things because you're managing finances. You had that session where you dealt with the finances. I, I really enjoyed that session. And he said that those days are long gone when you could have just, um, just wing it. So you know that you're managing the monies in a more prudent manner. But you could look at cost-effective initiatives that you can implement for the well-being of your team. It's something you've got to be creative. It requires a lot of thinking. Involve teamwork. We're coming back to Leroy's point. When you involve them from the get-go, it's easier when we have a time of crisis, get everybody together. You don't have to go this alone and develop a plan of action. I like this one that we're coming to. Be mindful of your attitude. Hmm. What is our attitude as leaders? What is our attitude like as a leader? What is our attitude like? You know, sometimes we would say, I'm good. No, Gail, I'm good. I'm, I'm cool. Have a wonderful day. Oh, be blessed. You know, you know the cliche is, right? But do you find sometimes what is in the inside of you comes out on the outside and shows up as a bad attitude towards your employee, towards those that you're leading, that you're called to lead? Does it show up? Maybe you're short. Maybe you come into the room and you do not say good morning. Or maybe that, 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 that good morning comes out as a mumble. Maybe your body language is speaking so loudly Nobody wants to come to you. You are unapproachable. Maybe you just shut your door and you're in there. And you don't, you just lock everyone at. What is your attitude like as a leader? We know we're going through as leaders. We know things are happening. We know that we are dealing with our personal issues as well as the business issues. What is our attitude like? And self-care, I come back to that. Because if you don't make the time to step away from the work and get social, when you get home from work, what do you do? There are things to do before you get to bed. so that you are relaxed and you have the right attitude towards those you lead. It is intentional. 
all that we're talking about has to be intentional. It does not come easy for everyone. Even the one, the, the, those who are extroverted, it does not come easy. Even the extroverted person wants to keep themselves under a table and stay there for a while. You ever felt like that? Or am I the only one? You just want to go to the ladies' room and stay there for a little while so that you can breathe. I know I'm not the only one. Gentlemen, some of you go out and you smoke. You find a post and you're there smoking by the post. Some people go out and they, they, they have a drink. Doesn't solve anything, doesn't help. It's not good for your health, but that's what we see people doing. Hmm? We need to get away so that we maintain the right attitude. We're still at the bottom line. Let's go. And as we bring this thing to a close, as we bring this session to a close, as we wrap our minds around the things that we have been talking about for the last few minutes or so, what are we really saying as leaders? What are we really saying? What does it come down to? Climb and maintain. Crisis leaders bring people together. That's what they do. I would like to, to believe that we are all crisis leaders. This is what we do. We demonstrate actions. We formulate thoughtful words and we bring this thing together. Crisis leaders do what? They look in what? We look at what needs to be done and we inspire others to join in. While we're doing all of that, as leaders, we believe. You see, we have got to believe. If we don't, nobody else will. We won't be able to convince anybody else. We have to believe, we must choose as leaders, as crisis leaders to believe that no situation remains permanent. I believe that with all of me, no situation remains the same forever. It's not permanent, always subject to change. It is what we do within that time of crisis that will make or break us, that will shape and, divide, and, de, um, and, and define us. It is what? You decide. This is your decision this morning. As I close, you decide. How are you? How have you been? leading in this time, in this time of crisis that we are in. How have you been leading those under your charge? What have you been missing? Is there anything you have been missing? Or do you have everything all together? I encourage you this morning the people that you are called to lead, they need you as much as you need them. Work on bringing it together. Work on becoming a crisis leader. Work on being that leader who specializes in time of crisis, 
fruit thrives and blossoms in the time of crisis. It makes you stronger and it shows what you are made of. Questions, comments, feedback, anything, anyone. Are you, have you gotten anything out of this morning? Is anything making sense to you? There are 46 persons in this meeting, in this session, and there must be at least two persons beside Leroy. Leroy, you can chat with me again, but Leroy, you have been contributing a whole lot to the discussions. Thank you so much. I think Ronaldo had one question. Thank you so much for participating. Come on, guys, there must be something. Let's communicate. Let's talk. We just have a few more minutes. Rowena, you have a question? Yes, morning. Morning, everyone. And I want to thank Gail for her contribution this morning. I want to specifically agree in the, the manner in which you um, defined leadership. And leadership is quite um, a word that we, we, we use, we just use wildly, but not understanding what what really leadership is. And I, I see it as a, a way of uh, a leader being somebody who includes everyone, includes, um, you know, they, they empower the people around them to make sure that um, things are uh, operationally smooth in, in their organization. So I, I want to commend your, your presentation this morning and say that it was um, on target and share that um, whilst we, we believe that, um, you know, we in this crisis and we have to do a lot to, to as leaders to make sure that we keep the keep the boat rowing the way we should, we should also have um, ensure that we empower people to make sure that they, they are part of the decision making process when we go forward. So thank you, Gail. And uh, Good morning to all again, and I, I, I continue to look forward to more sharings from the sport company. Good morning, Colin Peter Strand, the Baker Rugby Football Union. Colin, hold on for one second, please. <laughs> it's a, a banding together. It really is, it really requires rather us being intentional. That's the key, being intentional. So thank you so much for your feedback. Colin, go ahead. Yeah, good morning all. Uh, first of all, Rowena, I want to congratulate you on your elevation to the presidency of the TTM Cycling Federation. I know it's a vibrant organization, and I wish you all continued success. Um, rugby is in a unique, unique place in that we may be the last person to, re person to re turn to play. However, we are looking forward to it. Um, I have listened to all you have said, Mrs. Comments, and it, it, it's, it's really, really beneficial to us to put what you have said into play, right? Uh, we look forward to returning to play. We look forward to, to, to the communication. We are in, um, I could say a good place as far as the communication with the fraternity is concerned that we have, we have a, a secretariat that is daily updating 
and sending communications out. What we did is that we encouraged all of our players and administrators to go on the World Rugby website and the Rugby Americas North, which is the governing body for our area website, because there were a lot of there are a lot of training courses, and we advise them to go on to it, do the courses. There is one called Rugby Passport, which you know involves everything in rugby, and send the results to the secretariat so that we can continually or continuously update our records. So I'm saying now we, we may be in a better place, not on the field, but off the field administratively. You know, so that's what we do. We do that every day. Right. So I appreciate your your um presentation. It's it was great. And we hope that we could continue to do continue to do more of these presentations. Thanks much. That's my contribution. You're most welcome, Colin. And I'm happy to hear that it is the communication lines being kept open with your organization. Thank you so much. Yep. We, um, Mary is asking a question. Can you give some examples on how to inspire others to join in during a time of crisis? Before we ask the answer, Mary, Claire, Claire is saying that I agree that it is all about the mindset and that changes our perspective and approach to any task at hand. That's so true. Claire and the way we see things will determine how we operate and how we move forward in the future. So mindset them, you know, they, they, they talk about the mind being that battlefield. It's your mindset. The change starts first in the mind. So I'm glad that you agree. Mary, how can we how can we inspire others? Let's find out what is happening with them. Let's talk with them outside of the workplace, outside of work related things. Now we all know that each person, each home, each life has been affected. Maybe we can start right there with what has it been like for you in your home? How has it impacted your children? It might be a case where somebody's out of work. What is going on? And so when we ask these kind of questions, not to be nosy, but when we ask these questions with a view, not to judge, but to to find out how we can help. It could be that when you hear the story, you may agree to allow the employee to go home one hour earlier. It could be that you, you, you find from hearing the story that there's some way that you can motivate, you can encourage. Now, motivation and encouragement does not have to be, you put your hand in the pocket and give a million dollars. We don't mind that, right? None of us would mind that. that. That's motivation in itself. But what is more valuable? It's having someone listen. Listen to what is going on. Someone who gives me the impression genuinely that they care about me and not just what I bring to the table, not just the work that I do. And so when you listen, Claire Ann, and you say, listen, I know that you're going through this now. Girl, we're all in this. I understand. Have you tried? Did you think of? And you give some kind of hope because there is always hope. That in itself will inspire that person. Just the fact that you took the time not to talk work, but to find out how are you? How are you managing Gail? How are you feeling? 
you may have heard some conversation before about a, a about a sibling or whatever it is follow up check on that person these are the little things it's the little things that we can do that will help to inspire of course if we can go on to bigger things that's fine but we can start with the little things just by reaching out to that person hope this help any other question comment feedback if not thank you so much for taking the time taking the time for us to discuss how we can be more effective leaders in this time of crisis i wish you all the best of course you are going to get the video later on if there are any questions it's easy to reach me you know you can reach me through sport tt if there's anything you believe that i can help you with further in your leadership in your time of leading in crisis thank you so much